my name's Jason Mariner, for anyone that don't know me, uh, I got exposed on a television documentary called McIntyre and the Cover. Apparently I was a key figure in the notorious Chelsea Headhunters, leading and taking part in the firm and organising football violence. Didn't think I was anyone special enough to make a documentary on me, but the BBC thought I was, so here I am to tell, tell the tale after. And starting right back at the beginning, I mean, well, where are you from and, and you know, what are your roots? I grew up just a normal kid, like two brothers, got a sister, you know, just council kids, you know what I mean? My old man was a taxi driver. And were you like a rough kid? I was a nuisance, I was a nuisance, you know what I mean? I don't know about a rough kids, I mean, I wouldn't say I was one of them, the, the other kids said, oh, I don't want my son knocking about with Jason Mariner, you know what I mean? Because I always had respect for, for um, other people's parents, family and, and people in general. I was brought up that way, so, but rough in the sense of, uh, as a nuisance, yeah, I mean, you know, I wouldn't say I went home and done my fucking homework at like five before on a Tuesday afternoon, you know what I mean? Uh, did you get involved in like fights as a kid? Yeah, I think, I think you know, to a certain extent that uh, that's maybe what progresses you to maybe football violence, if that's what you're into. I mean, I always believe that schools fight schools, ours and estates fight ours and estates, boys clubs fights boys clubs, and, you know, you're passionate. I'm not saying that you're as passionate about your school, but you, you believed in your school or your year was the hardest year and the hardest school around the manor, so... When you support a team and, and you stick with them and you ain't like these pricks nowadays that just all of a sudden, you know, want to become some of the Paul Sandwich Brigade mob, you know what I mean, and jump up on the on the barrel and, you know, I mean, it, you know, the difference being is, is you cut me, me blood's blue, you know what I mean, it's, you know, I believe it stems back from that sort of thing, you, you believe in what you believe in and you believe, listen, if Chelsea played shit last night... I'd say we played shit, because I'm a grown man now. But when I was a kid, if someone told me they played shit, I weren't having it. I, was a, I just couldn't see any other way apart from, no way, fucking hell, didn't you see that ball Johnny Bumstead played? Do you know what I mean? You know, but the, the reality of it is, is we was probably crap. Oh, well, we was crap. <laughs> Do you remember like your sort of your first fight at school? <clears throat> no, I don't know. I remember getting nicked at school. I remember like... Uh... My brother was in the same year as me, my brother Paul. A kid hit him or saying, I don't know, or whatever. The council were working on the uh, greens and the surroundings of our school, you know. And uh, I found out who the kid was, so I picked the shovel up and hit the, hit the kid with the shovel, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, that's loyalty, that's your brother, that's, that's what you do, isn't it? That's natural, you know. For did someone that don't stick up with their brother, I think it's, you know what I mean? Did it give you a buzz or did you just do it because it was a loyal to uh, I'd be lying to say that it gave me a buzz, I mean, you know, or to say that it didn't give me a buzz because it was that far ago, I can't remember. But I do think it gives you a sense of achievement. You've hit someone, you've stuck up for what you believe in, your, your law is, you know, or involved with your family or your... Like I say, you're, you're passionate about whatever, but, you know, I just thought it was a liberty to, to, to gaze at my brother or whatever, or, or even if it weren't, I just thought, well, fuck him, he's got to have it, do you know what I mean? And did, did you have many fights sort of throughout school, or was that isolated? Um. So you got nicked? Yeah, I mean, I probably, I probably had my fair share. I wouldn't say, you know, I weren't getting into fights every single week or every, or every fortnight. I had my fair share, but... I think how you get through the ranks, even the likes of your schools and what have you, is because I get on well with people, you know, I, I like people, I think, you know, if you don't like people, if you don't get on well with people, then people don't really want to know you, do you know what I mean, they don't want to stand next to you in a pub and, listen, people phone me up and they want to go for a drink with me, because they know I'm, you know, I want to have a laugh, I want to have a good company, I don't want to go out and have a fight or whatever, do you know what I mean, but I just want to go out and have a laugh, you know, them days are behind me. You know, I, I was a kid that was always like an happy-go-lucky kid, if you like, do you know what I mean? And, you know, to be true, if the truth is to be known, I didn't take school seriously at all. And uh, I went and just um, had a laugh, do you know what I mean? I thought it was fucking funny, I thought it was a joke. When did your interest in football start? Oh, very early age, very, very, as a football supporter. From, from day dot, from, from when I can ever remember, from probably when I could s say ball, spell ball, kick a ball, whatever. I cannot get my head round kids that don't 
get involved with football. I just I think it's amazing. I think, how can you not? Do you know what I mean? Um, they probably think the same with me. Why have you got so much passion? Why have you got so much belief? Why have you got this, that and the other? But the truth of it is, is I have and I love it. Listen, I, I'm, I'm through and through Chelsea. You know, I'm through and through England. If I'm at home and there's Scunthorpe's fucking playing darling, and I'll put it on. Do you know what I mean? Because it's football. Did, did you ever, like, any sort of heroes at the start? Was yeah, of course. Chelsea? Yeah, always Chelsea. Well, saying that, no, to be fair, some of me have, you know, Paul Gascoigne, I mean, a tremendous player. You know, I'd be funny. They used to throw Mars bars on the pitch when the kid was, like, overweight. They said he was overweight. I'll tell you what, I'm fucking overweight, but I'd like to be as gifted as him, you know what I mean? Now he's too thin, apparently, so now all of a sudden he's, you know, the kid can't win, do you know what I mean? You know, I mean... It's just, it's a joke. I mean, I don't know whoever said that you had to be size 8 or size 10 or, or fucking 28 waist or this, that and the other. I mean, you know, art of the thin people, they're brass monkeys anyway. They're all junkies, aren't they? They're all on the gear. And, do you know what I mean? You know, if you're happy, you're happy. But getting back to, you know, Kevin Keegan, very, you know, hero of mine. Um, you Chelsea know, obviously worse. with Chelsea, it was like uh, Kerry Dixon. Obviously, we go back before that, it would be like, you know, Peter Osgood and that. Charlie Cook. Charlie it? Cook, of course, you know, I mean, these people go without saying, you know, you could go through the, the side then, I mean, you know, you come up to date and then you go Zolas and what have you, but Kerry Dixon, I mean, I see him not too long ago, he, he didn't let me down, I shook his hand, I said thanks for the memories, and he said it's all my pleasure, you know what I mean, and uh, it was nice that he was, you know, he's been out of the game like 15, 20 stretch, and he's, he's still like, you know, he, he's still happy that people recognise him, remember him, and you know, you know, there were, there, you had the mad, you had the mad lot as well, Joey Jones and Mickey Thomas and what have you, blinding, you know. So you're outside Chelsea, Jason. This is where it all started from years ago. Uh, as you can see, this is the centre of the universe. This is uh, some people go to church for their religion, and this was my religion, you know, as a kid. You know, I used to I used to finish my milk round and, and slip here from an early age. And uh, obviously I've been on my band and I'm, I'm still on, 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 on my banding now. But um, this is where it all is, you know. I mean, if you have a little look here, we've got Champions League. Obviously, when I was a kid, we weren't good enough. Well, there was no Champions League for a start. Um, and then we got in the UEFA Cup. And then uh, we're now playing the likes of Juventus and uh, bring them to the home of football. Um, so what does Chelsea mean to you then? Well, you know, it's like, you know, I always put it to you like this, you know, I mean, look, uh, you know, a smackhead's with a smackhead, a crackhead's with a crackhead. And football it is your drug, it is your religion, it is your drug. But, you know, like the media, they will always go on about oh, football thugs or only this or only that. But let me tell you, all these football thugs, all these football hooligans over the years and what have you, they love their team, they're passionate about their team, you know? You know, they stand in a pub and they talk about when they was you know, Johnny Bumps did miss the penalty at fucking Rotherham away when we lost 6 0 on a Tuesday night. Emily News was playing for Rotherham, you know. These are the times I'm going. It's all right for these people to sing out, like, you know, where were you when you were shit? Well, let me tell you, I was there. I was there, thank you very much, you know. But, you know, overall, what it means to is, uh, you know, uh, as you get older, I think, you, you know, you grow out of it to a certain extent, but you're still very passionate. You're very, you know, it's in your blood. It's something that you'll never, ever get rid of. Because let me tell you, Chelsea's changed so much over the years. You know, I was here one day, and uh, guys are selling Benedict rolls. Benedict rolls at three and a half quid. Like, what happened to fucking hamburgers? A ham and tomato, cheese and onion rolls. Benedict rolls. I said, here, mate, you're at the wrong ground. I said, Tottenham's down the road, mate. I said, listen, you, 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 all that, it fucking gets on my nerves. I can't stand it. You know, so you're passionate about everything that goes with your club. Listen, look. I don't think I'd want a season ticket. It's changed. The people, fucking geezers taking their fucking birds to, to football on a Saturday afternoon. What is all that about? Taking their fucking birds to, you know, I mean, I ain't being funny, you know. A geezer said to me the other week, he said, well, he said, I love me birds. I said, I love me mum, but I never took her to Millwall in 1982. You know what I mean? So when, when did you first get involved in, like, your first firm or your first incident of hooliganism? How does that start? I think you look up the people, you remember, you remember certain things, you remember certain games, certain certain bits and pieces and 
And you get yourself involved and you're not really at the front, or you're not at the front if the fucking truth is to be known, all that bollocks about you was leading them up, you wasn't, do you know what I mean? You was involved, you threw a few bits and pieces and, the, you know, whether you threw a right hand or not, and I can't remember what year, it was early 80s, very early 80s, we're Wolverhampton Wanderers away and um, we was in a car park and uh, there's a certain few of us just got out of the motor. My mate said, oh, this uni and Jackie wanted a piss anyway. The geezer said something to me, he said, what, you Chelsea and all that? I said, yeah, I'm Chelsea. I was only fucking 14, 15, I don't know. And uh, he's got a bit tricky, so I fucking spat him, which is the worst thing in the world you can do. I've hit this geezer. Well, he ain't moved. He has not moved. So I've got chased all around the car park. It's got beaten a fuck. But afterwards, it, it was like a lot of people knew about it. So Chelsea rallied around together and they done themselves right proud and they fucking... You know, they had a right, good, proper good tear-up with Wolves. And, you know, I thought, what was that for me? Do you know what I mean? You know, of course it weren't for me. Do you know what I mean? But they know a few Chelsea got a back hand outside the ground. But, you know, we had a phenomenal firm. And uh, at the time, I'm thinking, that's for fucking me. They're sticking up for me, you know what I mean? And, you all, you know, as you get older and this, that and the other, and you're going week in, week out, you know, you see the same faces. It's like a family. How does it actually start? Do you just turn up at a match? No, or? how it happened with me is there used to be someone who had a coach and what there would be is there'd be three, four, five of us that would bring, say, 10, 12 people onto a coach. So then what you'd do is you would, uh, you know, say to someone, oh, well, where are you meeting next week? You know what I mean? So you would find out where you're meeting or whatever and you'd go and meet their coach and then their coach will... You know, and after a fashion, it's the same old faces, the same people, the same faces, and then uh, you'd make your way, way to the ground together yourselves, you know what I mean? So do you have your, your own little firm, or does it become a whole Chelsea firm altogether? Well, to be fair, in the, uh, in the 80s, when I'm talking about, you're talking about the firm of like five, six hundred handed, do you know what I mean? If you knew you was playing, you know, your West Ham's, your Tottenham's, your Middlesbrough's, your, your whoever, you know what I mean? You know who's going to pull a firm, your Leeds... Your Sunderlands, you know, you know. I mean, now you're talking about it's all your little northern teams to be true. I mean, of course, everyone's still got a firm. We, you know, we still got a firm. I know everyone's still got a firm, you know. But to me, I say, listen, be thankful of your memories. You can't reel back the time. You know, people say to me, do you regret it? Don't regret a thing. Don't regret it. They were the best days of my life. I think Chelsea, you know, you know, I've got obviously got to say, I haven't got to say Chelsea, but that's not being biased. We did have a firm. We was fucking good. I, I seriously believed, and I'm sure these other teams and these other people, if they were sitting in my in my situation, would say the same thing. We all believed that we could not get done, you know. But then you had your northern, you, you know, you had your northern teams. I mean, Chelsea had a big northern contingent as well. You know, I remember going to place like Walsall on a Tuesday night. And like, you know, there's fucking thousands and thousands of Northerners all supporting Chelsea, you know what I mean? And I thought, why? You know what I mean? Fucking hell. You know, like I said before, it weren't like we was good. <laughs> How did the fights actually start? Are they arranged? How was it arranged? There weren't no internet. There was no fucking mobile phone. We knew their main pubs. They knew our main pubs. We'd get there early. They'd get there early. Whatever. You'd get into their town centre. You know, I remember going to Leeds one, one year, early 80s once again. We got in Pudsey, six miles outside Leeds. But Leeds heard that we were there. So they was like, you know, they, they would turn up. But, you know, they had to fucking turn up with a mob because we was fucking 500 handed. You know, the old Bill weren't, they weren't clever then. They weren't as clever. There was no uh, on your tail every two minutes. You know, you'd be in a pub fucking two, three hours before the old Bill turned up. And do people go tooled up, or or is it really just fists? Fight, nah, of course, or? yeah, of course they, do. they go tooled up. Listen, you play marbles, you want to win, don't you? I mean, it's what, what kind of things do they take along? Oh, anything, fucking anything you like, you know what I mean? I mean, your average knuckle dusters, your koshes, your blades, your your thing. I, I mean, I, I've known a power of mine. Well, we shared it, to be true, but we, we had, like, industrial gloves, and we put glue on the gloves, and we sprinkled glass on them, you know what I mean? And, you know, wore the gloves, you know what I mean? Um, you know, the old Bill called me, I'll just have a fat it's cold, isn't it? It's November. Uh, did it worry you that you, you might get done over? I think you're so deep into it, you don't fucking think about it. It's not until you've been hurt that you realise you can get hurt. You know, we've all come unstuck. There's no point fucking keep, you know, fuck me, Mike Tyson's lost a fight, you know what I mean? 
You know, we've all come unfucking stuck. So all these pricks that want to say that they've never been done, they've never been run, they've done this, they never... I ain't got no time for them, you know what I mean? I'd rather stand another beer with someone and say, fucking hell, we've done well there, but we didn't do so well there, and do you know what I mean? Did you have any really bad incidents where you got hurt yourself? It wasn't even so much hurt or whatever. Um, lucky, I, I, I would actually call it, do you know what I mean? Because I've had a few kick-ins, and I think a few more things could have happened to me, you know? Like, we was having a row once, uh, we was outside Pinky's Wine Bar at West Ham, and we was having it off, it was a night game. We met at a North London Tavern in Kilburn, and we had a proper pop of tear up with them, to be honest with you. But our little firm that I was with, which was only like fucking a dozen of us, you know what I mean? All the mob have been, because we broke away trying to be clever. I got tripped over and I got a few kicks to the head and whatever. But to be truthful, you know, if someone had had a tool or something, they could have just jibbed me or they could have done whatever or, you know what I mean? But um, we played Sheffield United years ago and uh, I was in a pub called the Berlin. The geezer recognised me from England away games, comes from nowhere, he just stuck and smashed me straight over there with a bowl. But what he didn't realise is, we was 80 handed up in the corner. Like it was, it's a big gaff, you know what I mean? We fucking absolutely, well, we, we smashed the gaff to bits, you know what I mean? It can just trigger the geezers recognise me, he's heard me accent, do the do. We had them last game of the season, we were staying up there all night, and it's just kicked off. And uh, my mate was gutted, he went, ah, oh, Jason, gutted. He said, you know, I said, don't worry, I said, they can't hit me with a bottle of Bex, I was drinking Budweiser, do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I just tried to make a laugh out of it, but my eye was wide open and these things happen, innit? it? Do you know what I mean? Did you have a particular favourite kind of tool that you used to take with you? I mean, did you prefer, what, a knuckle duster or uh, the glove? No, I preferred uh, Albus oil. Used to put it in a, in a Jif bowl or Vicks oh. bowl. So then, you you know, when the old bill give you a tug, when they give you a John Paul, they go, well, I swear, I've got cold, haven't I? Do you know what I mean? But it's Albus oil and a thing, but really, it stops, stops them seeing, doesn't it? And you know what I mean? You're away. Back in the day, you know, like the 80s, there was no Champions League, it was like you ate for cup <clears throat> and Chelsea weren't good enough like, you know, 1982s, 84s, the early 80s. Well, we was fucking shit really, so um, we always had a good following with England. Not being rude, fucking England are the bollocks, England are the number one uh, abroad. England are the fucking number one. Germany was uh, 1988, uh, we played the Irish. They beat us 2-1, obviously that gives the English a fucking good excuse to, you know, to have, a, to have a tear up with them, although they don't really need an excuse because they're fucking, they, they, you know, they have the tricolour, you know, they're walking about with the tricolour and what have you and singing fucking Republican songs, which gets the English fucking back up, you know what I mean? So uh, anyone and everyone will, will, will just be fucking getting clumped there, to be truthful. And then we had the Dutch, which was, uh, you know, let's have it fucking right, they were only 50 mile away from, from, from Germany, you know, they've only got to come down the border and uh, obviously they was going to outnumber us five to one, but to be truthful, didn't matter how much they fucking outnumbered us because we had our act together. Like, uh, to be honest with you, it's the best English mob I've fucking ever seen. Fucking listen, people just got nicked left, right and fucking centre. I mean, you know, he's just getting nicked, deported. There's nothing you could fucking do. I mean, listen, the English always get picked out anyway by the old bill, you know, because the reputation, it follows you. The old bill, they get bored, they want to wade in with a few fucking things. But listen, because it's in Germany and we're playing the Dutch, obviously, like, it was legal to buy tear gas and things over there. So everyone's like, you know, most people are told up anyway. Everyone would get a bit of tear gas, you know, smoke bombs and what have you, uh, flare guns. And, uh, we, you know, we'd just be on for the match, you know. And uh, we was outside Dusseldorf main train station. And you know, our firms was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And to be truthful, it's the fucking best firm I've ever seen of England. Uh, you know, and I, I've done some countries of England. They've come out off the train and ever we had our spotters there. And as they've come round one way, we've, we've, we've run straight at them. But little did they know that we, we had a mob going round the back of them as well. So we caught them in the middle and we absolutely annihilated them. You've got all these firms, they're fighting each other every week and then they join together on an England game. They don't know, that's the thing, they don't. Do you know what I mean? There's fucking more rounds between the English and the English. If I'm going to be honest, it's a shame because we're, we're a dear little fucking country on the map, but uh, we're the most feared nation, you know. I mean, not being funny, you go to fucking places like Bulgaria, uh, you know, Poland, you know, all these mad countries, they're like 10 years behind us, but um, they look up to us so much because we invented football vans. They had a massive firm outside our hotel at half past eight in the morning. I said, tell them mad poles to go away, man. 
The game ain't till nine o'clock tonight. Do you know what I mean? I said, fucking, what is going on? But where's it happens? We got all that together and went out and give it to them. But I fucking, I was in bed. Do you know what I mean? But to be truthful, you know, I've got pals that are, you know, whether they're Newcastle, Man City, you know, I know Man United. I've got, I've got pals all, all around the gaff, you know, Nottingham Forest. You've become pals of these over the years. And you stay in touch with them because, listen, let's have it right. At the end of the day, they are like-minded people. They just support another team. It's, it's a shame, really, but look, let's put it this way. England's playing wherever they're playing. Birmingham ain't going with Wolves. You know what I mean? Chelsea ain't going with Tottenham. Because even if they are all right for a fashion, they've had a couple of light hours, all of a sudden, not being fucking rude. They, they walked in the toilet like a fucking librarian, walked out like a gangster. Next thing you know, bang, they want to fucking row each other. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's the reality of it. You've got no chance nowadays with all this intelligence. You're struggling. You're struggling to get out of there, even if you're an associate. You know, I mean, me, I still have to sign on at the police station, uh, handing me passport five days before and sign on at the police station. But what I've done, I think it was a 1990 World Cup was France. So I know it's so obvious that I'm going to get a tug. So what I've done is I bought a camper van and I registered the camper van in Ireland. So I've got Irish number plates. So as I'm driving through Calais, the old Bill's pulling all the English over with the English number plates, and they wave me straight through, and I give them the thumbs up, and went, yeah, see you, baked potato. <laughs> so what is, like, the worst kind of England violence abroad that you've been involved in? Oh, there's, there's been a few with England. To be truthful, England's a buzz. England's a fucking buzz, because, it, you know... Let's put it this way. I wouldn't say it was the Republic of Ireland, do you know what I mean? And they just made a man in out of a fucking mole. They stopped the game after uh, 20 fucking four minutes. Uh, we was fucking one nil down to these pimplers, you know what I mean? That was the one you were in the stands above, is that right? Well, the funny thing is, see, this is another thing. This is another load of their lies. The fighting actually started below. What happened was, it was the first time the national anthem had ever been played at Lansdowne Road. So they played the national anthem and it got booed all the way through. That's fair enough, we do it to other people's national anthems, ain't got a problem with that. But when they want to start singing Republican songs about the IOA and this, that and the other, then your staunch Englishman ain't having it. So it all kicks off, but then all the English are above, aren't they? So they start throwing things down on the paddies and boom, boom, and it just escalates and then the paddies start going onto the, onto the pitch. So, uh, you know, it's spilt onto the fucking pitch and then all of a sudden you've got fucking Jack Charlton who really should be young for treason. He's a World Cup winner with England. You know, he drinks fucking Guinness now. He's took his auntie's dog for a walk who once went to fucking Ireland. He's now the manager of the Republic of Ireland. Supposing you're battering somebody or something, and do you have any regrets about it? Do you, do you think about the person? I think, thank you... fuck, I won. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if it weren't him getting it, it was me. <laughs> Fucking hell, do you know what I mean? Fuck that, no, I ain't got time for that, do you know what I mean? You know, at the end of the day, you know, well, what and, can you do? We, there's a, you know, if there's two of you in a fight, one can win and one can lose. I want to be the winner. Um, what about all of the, the headlines when they say, you know, scum and, you know, taking the name of Britain down and all of that? Let's get this into perspective, because anyone that is a fuck is a fan. Don't care what people tell me, you know, because they are passionate about their club or, or in their country, you know, whoever it may be. Look, do you know what? We've had it for so many years, it doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, that's like calling me fatty. Fucking hell, is that the best you can do? Well done, have a pat on the back. I mean, fuck, it must have took you all of, what, two seconds to make that headline up? Well done, you're clever. Do you know what I mean? Fuck me, I'll get a job with them pricks, you know what I mean? What, what about the sort of racist stuff that goes on? Is it, is it changed or...? or... Uh, I think you'll always, always get racism brought into it because I believe that the media and whoever will say, you know, Chelsea headhunters, they're affiliated so much to the Combat 18. But they ain't. I don't care what fucking people tell Yeah, there's racist kids at Chelsea. I believe that they fucking do not think anyone can go to a fucking bottle of Budweiser without a line of Charlie. I think that they think it comes hand in hand. Well, they're wrong. I'm sorry. Some people do drink. And don't take fucking drugs, you know what I mean? People do get infuriated and call people names and, and whatever. I remember the first ever time 
uh, a black player played for Chelsea, Paul Canneville, come on as a substitute for Chelsea against Crystal Palace. He got fucking booed. He got fucking bananas thrown on the pitch. This is by Chelsea supporters. He got fucking everything. But I'll tell you something now, we played Sheffield Wednesday. A few years later, you know, all of a sudden he's come on within two minutes, he scored a goal. Bang, we was fucking 3-0 down. I think mean, we drew three all that day. It was the quarter-final of the cup. We won a replay 2-1, Mickey Thomas scored the header. Black guys, I mean, are they in the firm? Yeah, of course they're fucking out of got pounds, of course they are. They, listen, who gives a fuck whether they're black, Chinese or fucking white? If they're a nice person, they're a nice person. I don't give a fuck, I'm not interested in that. You know, if I'm saying something bad about this country, does that make me a racist because I'm saying something bad about the country? I'm saying it about the government, about the country. Because I think it fucking stinks. I think it's a get-up. Combat 18, the British National Party, the National Front, the da 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 Whatever they want to do, it's all bollocks. It's all fucking bollocks. I think what it does is it gives the people that read the, the, the papers, such as the Times, the Independent, the Guardian, and the, and the more respectable papers, the, the people that buy them, will be your stockbrokers, your lawyers, your city bods, you know what I mean? You're not getting a fucking, you know, an odd carrier with an independent, are you? Do you know what I mean? So all of a sudden, it's it's trying to be anti your football hooligan again. How long did your kind of hooligan career, as it were, last? 15, 20 stretched, you know what I mean? Just, it's not a week, you know, you was there every week. As a kid, you was there every week, da 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 da, da. But then as you got older, you might be once a month. Well, like, now, I couldn't give a fuck, do you know what I mean? You know, well, I'm not interested in it now anyway. You know, you, know, you always keep your hand in the water, don't you? You know, like, what's happening, who's doing this, who's doing... But it's, you know, talk, it's, you know... So would, like, every week that you went out, would you get involved in an incident? No, you wouldn't. I'm not saying you wouldn't look for it. For argument's sake, I remember uh, we wound up going uptown on the piss and uh, all of a sudden we bumped into a mob of stoke. And just fucking ended up having it with Stoke in Leicester Square. Do you know what I mean? Because they've stayed in London, so they're having a jolly night out for wherever they played. And we're in town, and that's how it happens. That's how it used to happen years ago, you know what I mean? Fucking good, that wasn't all. <laughs> so the big moment came, and were you shot to fame, was with this uh, programme. Was it, it was the BBC and McIntyre. I bet I met McIntyre 25 times in 18 months. What happened was, is I had a tyre shop. And I had a couple of recovery trucks. Done a bit of mechanical work, this, that and the other. So one day I've come out of my flat. Hello, mate. He says, uh, you don't know anyone that could fit my exhaust on my car, do you? Gets the exhaust done. He sees me in a pub, sends a bottle of Budweiser over. Thanks for that. You know, done me a turn. So me being me, just sent one back saying, that's all right, mate, not a drama. But now, by sending one back to him, he's now come over. Had a little chat. Only 10-minute conversation. But now, we're in neighbourly conversation. He bumped into you in, in football matches, and, and what, became a member of your firm? No, because there is no membership for a start, and uh, he couldn't be anything to do with our, our firm, you know what I mean? Who was he? He's never proved himself, you know. You often get talked about at football, if you've done a few little things, or if you've done a few moves, you know, you earn your respect at football. You don't just get it, you have to earn it. But he was Joe the champ with the money, this, that and the other. But little did I know, not being fucking funny, could anyone in their right, in their right mind be really, really honest and say, you know what, I've had a fucking BBC journalist live next door to me for 18 months secretly filming me. And like I say, you saw more McIntyre on the fucking documentary than I did of any other time. Do you know what I mean? He's come and took the cream. But he went with you to football matches. Did he actually get involved in any incidents? No, or? but then, no. But then look at me on the, on the programme, nor did I. Yeah, admittedly, we went to um, Leicester. The funny thing about it was, <laughs> it ain't that funny, I've got six years for it, but <laughs> well, it is funny as it happens, but I wasn't going. I fucking seriously, seriously wasn't going. Uh, and not for any, you know, I'm not saying they tried to push it on me. Da, da, da. They said they had tickets, they had this, that, and that, da, da, da. but I wasn't going to go. My match on a Sunday got cancelled, so mate, I was going to a do in the West End on the Saturday night. So he offered me a lift, so I thought, sweet, I'll get a lift, I'll, get, I'll jump on a train, get off at St Pancras, bang, I'm in the fucking West End. Do you know what I mean? I thought it couldn't work out better. I went, yeah, lovely. Little did I know, fucking Big Brother's watching me, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Did they ever actually catch anything on film of you battering somebody or anything? Not a fucking ounce. <laughs> Not one single thing. They've got me in the ground talking on a mobile phone. 
Supposedly organising. Well, uh, apparently, but sorry that I had fucking four people working for me, but or, or I've got friends, you know what I mean? I didn't realise I was meant to have my hands on the head looking at the fucking wall, you know, saying, oh, I'm not allowed out till fucking Thursday, you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> I went to football and people phoned me, that's, you know, we're, we're big boys, that's what we do. So they never got you on film fighting anybody? Never got me doing anything. The worst they got me... It was on the Sunday Bloody Sunday, counter-demonstrating against uh, IOA sympathisers. And the other thing, phoning up one of Leicester's kids, allegedly organising a fight with them. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not here to sit here and say, no, we didn't phone this certain person, etc, etc. But what I am here to say is, is, listen, conspiracy to cause violent disorder, for anyone that does not understand, conspiracy means you have to conspire. Now, to conspire, you have to talk. Now, to talk, you have to answer a phone. Well, no one answered the fucking phone at the other end. So where's the conspiracy? Who have we spoken to? Who have we conspired with? Where's the conspiracy? Not guilty, Your Honour. You know what I mean? Whether you fucking like it or not, whether you think it's right or wrong, you know, whether you're invited to all the fucking funerals and not the weddings, the bottom line is, there weren't a fucking phone call that was answered. No conspiracy. So what did you actually go down for? Conspiracy to cause violent disorder and an affair. So I got four years for conspiracy to cause violent disorder at football and I got two years to run consecutive for the Sunday Bloody Sunday, which obviously totaled in six years. And how long uh, did you serve? The answer to your question is I served two years, 11 months. It's a fucking liberty. The country stinks. This is... Uh, the old Knightsbridge Ground Court, which is now Blackfriars Ground Court, where I got sentenced. I was a bit gutted because I was meant to be at the Old Bailey, and it's not because I wanted to be at the Old Bailey. It's because you would have got more, more people from South London there. I think you would have got your own people, you know, instead of, like, more people from your West London areas, you know, your Kensingtons, your Chelsea's, your Fulham's, and all around there and all that, and they, you know, they think they're different, you know, maybe a cut above the, you know, people from uh, South London where, you know, I, I think I would have got a, a fairer hearing. But anyway, this is where it all happened and I wound up getting six years, uh, which weren't that bad because I got out on a Tuesday. Do you remember coming in the front or did you come in the back? Yeah. No, I never come in the front. Always, uh, you know, obviously I was on my mind in Wandsworth, so uh, I was in the sweat box all the time coming, uh, car, I think it was just round the side there, you know, because I remember there's, there's a, just right down that street is a wine bar. And uh, when I got sentenced, a bit leery of me, I know, but I can tell the story to this day. I sort of, I smiled at the jury and I winked, you know, as though to say, you take that to the epoxy wine bar and I'll take it to my grave. I got 20 year ban originally, but there's the maximum 10 years in this country unless you get a life ban from the club. The judge asked me to go back upstairs because my QC stood up and said, can you rectify that? The maximum's 10 years in the country. So he asked me to go back up the stairs and I said, I said, bollocks, I said, he's just give me six years, I can't, I want to have a lay down. I said, take me home, you know what I mean? Give me back to Wandsworth, like that, you know what I mean? What do you mean? I said, I ain't going fucking up and down the stairs. I said, I've just had fucking four weeks of that. I said, he's just give me six years, 20 year ban, tell him up his bollocks. So he sent another message down saying, I'll, I'll get done a contempt of court if I don't go back up the stairs. Oh, I said, I don't think 28 days on six years will affect me that much. I said, but also, do me a favour. I ain't the brightest spark in the world. I said, but tell the judge I cannot get done for contempt of court if I ain't in the courtroom. Fucking very hard to get done for contempt of court. I said, fuck me. I said, he wants to learn about his contempt of courts and his conspiracies, doesn't he? Do you know what I mean? He's, he's got everything a bit pickled. He still, he was a bit old, you know what I mean? I think he was more worried about getting his rent boy on his knee at home. <laughs> So here we are outside Wandsworth Prison. Tell us a bit about what it was like being inside. When I can only speak from when I was there, I don't know about now. Um, when I was there, there was no televisions. Uh, it was a 24 hour bang up. You know, they'd say it was a 23 hour, but let me tell you, if it looked like it was fucking going to rain, you had no chance. I remember going up to a certain screw one day, coming back, coming down to get me food on the, off the hot plate. And I said to the kangaroo, I said, uh, I said, here, Gov, I said, they reckon it stopped raining in China three days ago. Is there any chance of a bit of exercise? And he walked up to me, <laughs> and as it happens, he walked up to me like the old police officer, and he put his, and he went, Mariner, no chance, no chance. And, and as, as I walked away, he said, here, Mariner, come here. And he went, and do you know why? And I went, no, nah, why's that then, Governor? I said, because no doubt you're going to tell me. He went, oh, of course I'm going to tell you. He said, because you're a c He said, you're a 
But to be fair, he was one of these that fucking used to like getting into people's heads and this, that and the other. I mean, he weren't as bad as what he fucking made out, you know what I mean? But I'll tell you something now, they fucking love a booze here. That's why you're fucking behind the door. They're around the officers' mess all the time, but in the lighthouse shop having a booze all the fucking time, you know what I mean? See that gaff there? More than 95% is brass monkeys. It's full of junkies. Fucking, you've never seen a gaff. And let me tell you, as I went to all the other prisons, it is the same. It, honestly, you know, you don't get when when you get a few good, good people in there, you know, that are off the street, off the penny, you know, fucking, you know, whatever they're in there for, like proper criminals or, you know, you stand out. You stand out so well because everyone else is scratching and rattling and fucking, you know, wanting medication. Can it really break your spirit in there, or are you all right? No, to be honest with you, look, every man's got a breaking point. Oh, you know, I remember one side day there was an Algerian geezer, and I come back off a visit, and he was on the fucking landing, cut, and he was ah, and all that, and I went, "What are you fucking doing?" Well, he said, "I can't take this place no more." He said, "I can't." I said, "Get up, you cunt!" I said, "Do not let the fucking screws, do not let them see that they broke you." I said, "I know it's fucking hard. I know it's sore, but it's got to get better." I said, "You're on fucking remand. We're all on remand. You know, you know, you you, you treat it bad. You know, you. I mean, let me fucking tell you, there was a certain screw, fucking certain screw. When I, I remember being on the op plate, right." And the screw turned around to me and he went, he, he went one day, I was having a bit of a debate with him. And uh, he turned around to me and he went, he said, well, you know, you're all as bad as each other. And all. I said, hold up a minute, about, about, about as bad as each other. Who's as bad? I said, what, the same as fucking Rule 43? And he went, well, yeah. And I went, they're fucking nonces and grasses and fucking paedophiles and rapists on fucking Rule 43. I said, don't fucking put me in the same category as them. And his old attitude was, a prisoner's a prisoner. And I swear to God, yeah. If I fucking see that, I'd like to put him straight on his ass, a cunt, you know what I mean? Because, you know, one thing we ain't is nonsense, fucking grasses, paedophiles and fucking rapists and, and what have you. But, you know, that is... I'm not saying all the kangas are the same. I'm not saying all the screws are the same. Um, but, I, but I am telling you that, that you know, that, that, that is, that, that's how they book it. I know this might sound mad, but there always be someone worse off than you. You walk down the landing and someone say, fuck me, Jay, six years, that's a fucking lump. Well, let me tell you, it is a fucking lump, but, you know, all of a sudden you look across the road, there's a geezer doing an eight. There's another geezer doing a cockle, he's doing a 10. There's a 12, there's a 15, there's a 20. So it's not the greatest thing in the world, but you have to fucking live off of other people's unfortunate sentences, I'm afraid. Yeah, so this is the, uh, I don't know if you can get a shot of these gates. These gates here, it's uh, when they're sweat box which is the vehicle that uh, uh, brings you into prison backwards and forwards from Colt when, um, uh, when, you, when you're actually coming back home, as I used to call it, because when you're here, let me, I can assure you one thing, all you are is a number, FR4629, bump, that was mine, that was me, that was it, that's all I am, you're a name and a number, that's the bottom line, all right? Um, uh, that's the gates there, and, um, You'd go in there and you wouldn't see daylight again until uh, you was due back at Colt, you know, or unless you walked, which I didn't. Nice being back. It's nice to be fucking outside. I know I might be back. No, it's a shithole. You see, you know, I mean, let me tell you, I was on the ones, and the ones is below ground level. So oh, it's just fucking, you know, there's plenty of co you've got plenty of fucking movement in there, but it's all cockroaches. I mean, I got raided one time, you know, the whole landing, I was on the hot plate and we got raided, we got raided. it was like 7 o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was, I was raiding the soul. And I said, here, Gav, I said, do me a favour, I said, fucking, do you know what I mean? Take a bit of care, I've got the fucking dog on my bed. I said, get him off the fucking bed, I've got to sleep in there, that's my home, you know what I mean? I said, do us a favour, get him off the bed. And this, that and the other, but I knew I'd had the cockroaches in because the fucking bed was off the wall, you know what I mean? So When you were in the prison, <laughs> what were your views about McIntyre? Listen, let me tell you one thing. All the time McIntyre lives in my head rent free, I ain't getting a pound note. He can't live in my head for nothing. Do you know what I mean? I just think, I think he's an unemployed old Bill. You know what I mean? I couldn't give a fuck for him. Couldn't give a fuck for his ways, his, his manner. Listen, the difference being, he thinks he's a new Roger Cook, doesn't he? Right? Roger Cook had the arsehole to turn up and say, listen, Jason Marin, I've just been filming you for 18 months. Duh, 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 duh. What did McIntyre do? Slipped off into the mist. You know what I mean? Got no arsehole, don't say nothing, you know. Does all these documentaries and fucking 
sets people up. They walk into a room and they've got a warrant out for them and they get nicked and whatever. You know, he's a mongrel as far as I'm concerned. If I walked out of this fucking dojo, out of this gym now, you know, I'll see him get knocked up in the fucking air. You know what I mean? I mean, the beetroot, or if anything, I'd probably go down his pocket and see if he's got a few quid he can lend me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I couldn't give a fuck for him. But when you were sitting there in the prison cell, you must have been pretty fucked off with him. You can't, you cannot drive yourself mad about it. you just got to think, look, it was yesterday's fucking fish and chip paper fucking nose, you know what I mean? You can't, I can't. Hey, to be honest with you, it, it does other people's heads in more than it does mine. They all want to know, the, do you know what I mean, this, that and the other. But that's why I have to tell them. That's why I have to do this DVD. That's why I have to, that's why I do the audience with, you know, the books being written. People have to know, because let me tell you, in 10, 15, 20 years' time, whether it be him or not, there'd be another out there that would do exactly the same thing to somebody else. Do you know what I mean? And, and listen, it ain't stopped me talking about the old days and what have you. I had someone, a mate of mine up in Manchester, was going to get a tattoo. I said, do us a favour. I said, I said, where are you getting it done? He said, I'm not sure yet. So I sent him to the one who McIntyre allegedly fainted, right? So he's in there getting a the tattoo done. He went, oh, he said, you're the fella that done the McIntyre. And he went, yeah. And he went, nah, nah, he didn't faint. It was just for the, just for the camera. Exactly. I fucking know that. Everyone know that. I mean, unless you're an out and out. Who fucking faints with their first toe on their arm there? You know what I mean? I mean, you know, there's worse places than that. But if he fooled the public, good luck to him. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that I never got fucking fooled. But what I'm saying is, is what he's done isn't hard. I could physically stand here now and go out and film everyone up and down the high street. It's not our job what he done. So how bitter are you about sort of losing that business that you set up? Another one of my mottos is good follows bad. You know, I'm a bit of a strong character, you know. Uh, you know, what can you do? There's no point. At the time, I was fuming, you know, like when I was in Wandsworth Hall, I, wanted, I just wanted my recovery trucks to be, but, but the council got them and they crushed them because they didn't have tax on them. You know, fucking hell, they come with a right few quid, you know what I mean? You know, but that's all right. But as long as he's all right, the mongrel, you know, they, you know, but it's a fucking liberty, really. But, you know, there's nothing I can do about people losing their fucking jobs. You know, I'm swagged, I'm away, and now I'm behind the door. What's the sort of personal cost afterwards? Because, I mean, you come out and your business has been decimated, as it were, and you've got to start again. How tough is all of that? Well, it's, you know, listen, it's a fucking lot of money. I wouldn't want to tell you what I fucking lost. I've got to tell you, you know, I was earning good money. I was getting good money out of uh, out of picking up these cars for, for a massive company, by the way, that, that, that would phone me up, you know, say they've got 20 cars at the auction. Can I go and pick them up? You know, fucking hell. They found a, um, uh, a phone book in there. And they said, you know, fucking hell, you've got, you know, you've got Albert Marks' number there, Freddie Foreman's, Pretty Roy Shaw's, Dave Courtney's, Carlton Leach, you know, boom, boom, going for all these fucking people's numbers. You know, I would do, it's a phone book. <laughs> fucking, I don't mean no harm, what am I meant to have in the phone book, you know what I mean? And they took it for evidence, and I don't know what evidence, and I've never got any of it back, and they sat in the oven, they took the trailer, and, you know, so you lose the trailer, then you lose the thing. But as I'm getting nicked, putting the bolts on the on the thing because it you know it don't matter you know because i give a few quid to get in there in the first place mm. so anyway it's not a problem we retrieved it and uh, i got a few quid back for the gaff when i come out but anyway that's not over near or there um so he's on dancing on ice and you're, you're having to come out and pick up the pieces yeah but listen dancing on ice i mean let's have it fucking right i mean good, i'll say good luck to the man because he come fucking seconds well you might as well be knocked out in the first round because let's have it fucking right who remembers the runner-up a very good pal of mine, Arun Maltaraj, just sadly passed away. He acted on behalf of me as my agent as well. It was an awful lot of people there, you know, Simon Jordan, Crystal Palace Chairman, Max Clifford. And McIntyre turned up, put his hand out and shake my hand. So basically I was spouting his hand, you know what I mean? And I just told him to fuck off. I said, listen, I said all the time I've got breath in my body. I said, I'll never shake your hand. I said, but um, I said, when you're prepared to, to do a uh, documentary with me, uh, on prime time, as you put me on prime time, uh, with the odds in my favour, with the editing, you know, with my agent, which is also Rune's wife, Teresa, I said, then I'm prepared to, to, to do a head-to-head -to, -head to you. It won't be a documentary, it won't be, a, it won't be working together, it will be a head-to-head, -head, and let's find out the truth, and let the, let the British public, uh, and the world, because let's, let's not forget, my, my documentary went all around the world. So let the world know what actually went on behind the scenes. So at no uncertain terms, I told him to fuck off, and, uh, 
you know, it, basically it was my idea. I wanted the head to head because I want the world to know how much of a, how much of a mongrel he is, you know, how much of a dog he is. And um, I want people to be aware that, you know, what the BBC actually done was shocking, you know, and uh, there's things that I can't say on here. Um, but they are in my book, and I'm not, that's not just going to keep plugging my book. They are in my book. I'm not going to take them out. They're in there for the world to see, and it's the truth. It's about turning it round, and let's have it right. If you're falling into society's side, about upper class people, they hate it when you turn it round. So that just gives me more of an incentive. Let's get this DVD out there. Let's get the book out there. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's not just read the Observer and think, oh, oh, is that what really happened to uh, that, that vile man, Jason Mariner? You know, the truth of it is so much more. What is your favourite hooligan memory? Just a bit of everything. We used to go in the early 80s to be trouble, organising the coach, going, going into the pubs. Not being funny, you used to do the fucking fruit machines, do the thing, there was no alarms on them. You used to do the porto, do whatever. Fucking get yourself a few quid, sell the beer on the coach. You know, me, me dad had a pub, although he was a taxi driver, he ended up becoming a publican. So I used to sell beer on the coach. So it was a little bit of a buzz organising the coaches, always selling a bit of beer, doing a fucking film machine. Maybe if there's a nice shop, you'd be having a chore up. Uh, and then if you ended up having a punch up, do you come first all of a sudden and your team's won? It's a fucking day. It's a day I've done more in a fucking day than some of these done in a lifetime you know what I mean in the future now you do you're going to start doing these audience with shows yeah I've done a few audience with you know what I mean Howard Marks and Dave Courtney and whatever to be honest it's these kind of people that have told me listen turn it round I'll get up there people can ask me any question they you know it's their night more than it is my night you know what I mean but they ask me any question we try and have a laugh we have a light hour at the same time I'll just tell the truth I've got the answers because I've been in it I've done it do you know what I mean it's all right, it's a good night out, you want to book one. For people watching this DVD who are considering a sort of football hooligan lifestyle... Career. <laughs> career, as it were, you got any advice for them, or...? Yeah, get in early. Get in, do it, and get out. But let me tell you, see nowadays, you get fucking nicked six, seven, eight months down the line. Because of CCTV, you think you're home and dry. See, years ago, you used to go and do it, you used to get in, do it, you're sweet. But now, they sit back... They ain't got to put all the old beer on you. Whereas we used to get nicked, get our collar felt, they haven't got to. Because while you're having a big fucking row, yeah, of course, the local old beer will turn up or whatever. But, big brother's watching you. So all I can say is, look, be lucky. And if you can't be lucky, get it not guilty. Would you go back to it? Listen, we've all got to turn a corner. It's time to grow up and fucking do your own thing in life and get a pound note and worry about a bit of pension money, you know what I mean? You know, at the end of the day, to be truthful, you want your boys to go to football and be safe as well, you know what I mean? So but, if, there was, uh, um, if there was a big rut going on down the road, you'd uh, pass it by, would you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> it's true. No, I said that in the concert. I said they don't understand the word.